Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the session that uh, Alexander Klaas, Russell said, and I will have with you together for the next one hour. Let's have a brief look at the agenda that we will share with you today. So we will start off and uh, look at the um, data mining. What does data mining actually mean? What do we have uh, as insights from using data mining in warehouse processes? And then what key takeaways can we get from using data mining based on a case study that Miebach had in Germany? Out of this, we will then come to the conclusion how we can quantify and secure these improvement areas that we have identified with data mining. And then, um, as I said, we'll give you a very nice demo how dashboards with live data in SAP Analytics Cloud can help you to monitor and secure these improvements that you've made in your warehouses over a long term. First of all, let's have a first look on what uh, Westernacher is doing. We are almost now 53 years old and we have 28 offices throughout the world with more than 700 experts. And we cover a lot of different areas, especially in the digital supply chain. I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically we can cover all processes from end to end. And as you can see, our spirit is to be pioneers and being the first in our areas of expertise. And that is what is really driving us as partners at Westernacher. Alex, would you like to introduce yes. Mibach shortly? Thank you, yes. So Mibach, the supply chain engineers, we're both consultants and engineering, similar age, uh, 50 years old when first automation technologies came up in, in warehousing and supply chain. And uh, we are working across three pillars of supply chain transformation, engineering and implementation, and operational excellence with a worldwide presence in 21 countries and uh, expertise and experience and all the various key industries that you see on the slide. Um, we have about 380 plus uh, consultants around the world. And uh, we also have a, a strong digital expertise in analytics, control towers, and so on. And that's why um, we, we felt that this uh, was almost a no-brainer to have a partnership with Westernacher, where for you, we think uh, it brings the, the best of both worlds of the uh, various um, strengths and uh, combine it in a tremendous amount of expertise, leadership, and uh, advising uh, for your supply chain. Yeah, so as Alex just described, Westerner and Mibach share the same values. We want to be leaders in our areas of expertise, being pioneers, um, cover a broad range um, of different areas. And this is something where Westerner and Mibach can really bring up the best out of each other and jointly uh, help our customers. Yes. Okay, so let's go into the topic data mining. I think it's a great example of uh, where we can work together. So what is data mining? Uh, I'm sure everybody talks about big data, nowadays and what to do with it you've heard all of this the gold of the 21st century what have you um, so the starting point is really what we see is of course nowadays uh, the revolution is so much data is collected typically in in what's being called data lakes right each process step from procurement inbound to outbound everything is collected of course and um, that's really the, the i think one of the mega trends of, this, of the uh, decade here, uh, what can we do with all of this nice data? And there are several things. Um, you can uh, use data in smart execution, yeah, industry 4.0, integrated planning, visibility, have a control tower, have the transparency, uh, 
day to day using this data. Uh, use data to feed robotics to do a predictive analytics uh, on a more tactical level. And this uh, data mining using uh, really digging deep and uh, analyzing this data, uh, that will be our topic of today. So I want to give you a brief introduction. What do we mean when we say data mining? Um, think of it from, from a decision maker's point of view. Um, have you ever asked yourself something like, why has my service level declined over the past months? Yeah, I'm sure uh, some of you will have experienced uh, some, some disruptions due to COVID over the past two years. And um, what we see a lot is it's very difficult to pinpoint. Yeah, the supply chains are so interconnected, so complex. It could be several things. It could be a sourcing disruption, shortage of laborers in DC, due, um, targets not being reached due to that. Which DC is it? Which part of the DC is it? And typically, this would, you know, you'd have to launch an investigation over several weeks and months to uncover this. Um, and there might be also um, yeah, different, different parties involved that we be a lengthy process. So the approach here is using data mining to uh, uncover the, the, this kind of information out of all of those digital logs, right? Uh, we have different systems that are connected, SAP, EWM as one example. And the data, you would, could re would read it from the data. Yeah, if you look at this small example, you trace your inbound, your quality check, your put away, your picking, your shipping. And you could run an analysis on this. So where is time spent, where is money spent relative to what it should be? You could measure lead times, you create all kinds of numbers out of it. And through this process, for example, you could determine, okay, we're losing a lot of time in quality check. Yeah, we have a poor quality of a supplier. And that's why we're missing our targets right now. Crystal clear answer, black on white. Um, and this could be uncovered very quickly. So the benefit of working this way is really, and we see this in, in working these kind of projects a lot, fact-based decision-making. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not someone who maybe, uh, you, you, who would try or have an incentive to work around the facts, but the data will really show it. Um, you will uncover trends and hidden inefficiencies, uh, believe it or not, but many times, even though, um, of course, people are aware or know their supply chain the best, um, there's still always things that come out of the data that are surprising. Again, it's just too complex to really see or to have obvious things in there. You could, of course, extend this way of working uh, also to understand the customers. Yeah, what what are trends in order patterns, order structures, uh, where are things going uh, in that direction. Increase service levels across sourcing, production, and, and distribution by pinpointing and by effectively improving things. And at the same time, this will, this will also lead to higher efficiency, lower costs in the end. So how would this specifically work? Um, you have this data from ERP, WMS systems, orders, shipments, goods and inventory, what have you. Um, also, of course, exception handling, errors are a big a topic. Going to the details of individual timestamps, you know, when exactly are goods being picked, uh, being moved, really tracing it kind of from a perspective of, of, the, of the good throughout the supply chain. Also scans per user, uh, looking at productivities and so on. And um, you have so much, the, you need to be careful not to get lost in the, in the forest there. So there's all kinds of powerful advanced algorithms to employ to find the needle in the haystack. Yeah, what's really, what's really driving my performance here? Uh, so there's so-called classification algorithms, regressions, clustering, and a lot of AI-based methods. A lot of nice stuff. Uh, not to go too much into detail here, but really what you get out of it is 
um, a an analysis like on the right. So let's say we're interested in picking performance in the supply chain and it could be a multitude of things, right? And that's also what we see. Uh, there's a lot of ideas, there's a lot of hypotheses. Okay, yeah, it might be this, it might be that, but data mining really put numbers to it. So for example, uh, order structure is really driving it. Error rates is the biggest influence. It could then tell us, hey, we need to look at this. How do, can we reduce errors? Uh, time of the day, yeah, fatigue, uh, different shifts. Is it article sizes? Well, in this example, it might that might be something that's you, that that's uh, an opinion, but ex the numbers would tell us no. Doesn't matter across article sizes; it's, it's the same one, and so on. So that's the way you would really find um, and pinpoint your energy. This is what we have to tackle. This is the, the core reason. So let me uh, walk you through a small case study uh, to give you a real world example. So this is a data mining project we did in Germany. It was a highly automated logistics center. And uh, it, was, it was a huge investment. It was a very complicated system to get running. And still um, the customer here did not reach fully their expectations on what had the system had been planned for. Um, and uh, it was a little bit difficult to say, okay, what's really going on here? Yeah, is it, um, are, is, is the conveyance being underdimensioned and uh, cartons and bins are in a traffic jam on the conveyors and do not reach the next station in time? Is it just the way orders are released? Uh, is it uh, early enough? So uh, what we would do here is take three months of historical data, each time step, millions and millions of data sets, um, each individual bin, each order, and run this through the data mining. So uh, we look at different things. We can put numbers to it. That's what you see on the left, different variables, as you would call it, and their effects. Uh, of course, lots of visualizations to make this understandable. And you can see here, uh, some graphs where it says, um, yeah, uh, depending on how quickly you allocate, how, how much can you pick, um, and how does it fluctuate throughout the day, all kinds of stuff. Um, also, the orders were analyzed, yeah, how, how frequently are your SKUs changing? Is it that you just have different SKUs every day and that's driving down performance? Uh, all kinds of things were analyzed here. And it turned out in this example, uh, slotting was really the the main thing we need to address. So uh, what it means is there's basically uh, two areas where to put SKUs. One was really the high, uh, the, the very productive area, so-called static uh, bins, where you should put your your A SKUs. And there's the dynamic slotting where there's B and C SKUs that are dynamically being reconveyed. So what we saw that is in the data on days or even in hours where you have a high share of the static picks, uh, performance is great versus other times of the day where you have to do a lot of replenishment. This drives down the, the performance. And this was by far the, the highest, had the highest impact on the performance. So on the flip side, we could rule out the conveyance are fine, right? And this was something that people kind of had in mind. It was kind of an idea that was already set in, in their minds, but no, the numbers show that's not the case. We need to focus, put our energy in how do we slot these views. And the second one was uh, if express orders come in, um, then we don't know which SKUs will these express orders hit, the short-term orders. So also we need to look at, okay, the sales department maybe have some better information which orders are coming in. Can we have a better data and then incorporate into this slotting process? And all of this compounded into not just you know 2% performance increase, but from the numbers, again, comparing days where this worked better versus other days, we were able to prove, look, if you invest into reorganizing this, you'll reach 15% higher performance. Yeah, again, the, the team at the customer, they 
they were trying to get uh, some awareness to this. And if you can put this clear number to it, that will also, of course, increase motivation to go ahead. Yeah, let's redesign this process. Let's uh, spend some time on this because we know at the end of this, there's a 50% gain that we, we can prove we were able to reach. So, um, how long would this kind of project take? Uh, you would start with, of course, uh, handover, getting into the process. Um, the actual data mining, that's quite standard. Uh, that's only two to three weeks. You would then need, of course, some phases of interpreting, interpreting the data, visualizing things, really trying to make sure you, you understand this correctly and how to read those charts and numbers correctly and then develop an action plan. So pretty short lead time, um, get to clear recommendations, get to clear actions, getting to know exactly what to do, what will be the benefit and what are things that do not move the needle much. But how do so, you ensure that this really stays, that you stay on track, that you don't get off what um, Alex just described as the outcome from your analysis uh, out of data mining. Um, and that is where the EWM Insights dashboard can help you with. And what you can see here is that basically right when this first phase of understanding, improving has been concluded, the dashboard can pick up yeah, so the first eight to 12 weeks, we would in parallel with you work on the KPIs that are needed to track your progress and your success. Of course, together with Alexander, who would also give his valuable input. Okay, this is a very important KPI at uh, your company to tr keep track on. And then after this first initial process has been closed and you have improved, we can set this dashboard live and ensure by our continuous monitoring that your processes keep in the range where you would like to have some. So now let's have a quick look on what this EWM Insights dashboard is really about. Um, it is a live data dashboard. So instantly you will see the live data from your operations in warehouses. And it will provide all necessary information on one screen for you available with details that you can go to. And there you can have triggers where automatic emails will be sent to you if a certain alert uh, has been uh, triggered or if a certain um, line has been reached that you um, are informed about this. And of course, it opens up all opportunities as SAP Analytics Cloud has built in. Live collaboration, you can tag data to a data uh, information to a data point so that others can see them. You can um, export this to PowerPoint PDF in case people are not able to get to this dashboard live. All this, I'm happy now to hand over to Russell who will share far more details in his demo. Thank you, Mark. So let me introduce our EWM Insights. So this is Westernacher's dashboard. And this is something which we use to give our clients real-time visibility into their warehouse health. Now, this, of course, is beautifully visual. In this particular example, we're using the new SAP Analytics Cloud, which is a wonderful AI-accelerated self-service tool for visualizing and analyzing data. It integrates very smoothly into any SAP platform based on HANA which is the in-memory analytical appliance. Bottom line with this is, that is what is powering these metrics and they are real time. So the idea here is that if you're working in a warehouse, you can walk around 
with a tablet or cell phone in your hands. Drilling down and following what's actually happening now, second to second, minute to minute. At a glance, you as a warehouse operative or manager should see where do you need to jump in. It also is something that we put on the big screen. So imagine this, huge 50 inch monitors dotted around the warehouse, showing us what's going on and what we should be looking at. Balls of screens inside a conference room so that upper management can keep an eye on what's happening across the company. But of course, these visualizations are not the full story. This is simply one way in which we can make these metrics, these key performance indicators, these KPIs, tangible and visible to the people working with them. The real meat and drink of this is the virtual data model behind every single metric. So all in all, I'm going to be walking you through something which contains a combination of 50 metrics that we've designed, KPIs, each of which is what we call a virtual data model, something that is calculated on demand, live from your warehouse data. And these are the things which someone like Alexander, a data scientist, will want to get their hands on because you can use these to extract massive amounts of data that has been turned into information that you can then use. So for example, in this first screen, we're showing a basic overview of typical warehouse processes. We've got a view of your inbound and outbound deliveries on an item level, on a header level. We're calculating the number of inbound cases processed within the last 24 hours, and then doing a simple calculation based on the number of people working on them that we find in the systems to show you how, well, how effective and efficient they're being. How many cases are they able to process per hour? How many items are able to replenishment, replace per hour? How many outbound cases? So picking and packing and a view of your warehouse capacity. What's the shelf situation now as compared to a few minutes ago? We can even look at on-time delivery. But the point is, behind all of these items, there are an awful lot of different calculations. Here on the inbound screen, you'll see this a bit more clearly. So with inbound, we're receiving cases of goods. And these we will need to unpack and process. We can pull the data from the warehouse across the entire history of your warehouse operations. So as you can see here with this timeline, processing time by delivery, if you've got a couple of years worth of data, then we can show you so that you can uncover trends which might be seasonal. We can also use a few simple built-in predictive abilities of SAC itself to just generate a simple statistical forecast. Now, that is not as sophisticated as anything Alexander would be doing, but it's something which would help a manager to spot what's going on. The same way we could show these as a simple percentage of items which we are dealing with over time. We can again calculate processing times. We can look at the inspection statuses. We can even distribute across the types of goods. And this again is information that's in your warehouse. All we're doing is we're reading things out of tables, performing calculations and cleansing live to turn that raw data into something that makes sense. Alexander was talking about timestamps. Everything that happens in your warehouse, every single movement, every single action, We'll have a timestamp. And with those timestamps, we can measure every single operation. But that kind of list, just timestamps and things happening, doesn't tell you anything. And that's what I mean by raw data. So our calculations here, these hidden data models, they're turning that into information. The time taken 
to perform a particular task, a meaningful task, processing time for delivery. Or again, calculating a frequency of how many cases were processed within a given hour. That's information. And that's the sort of thing which the data scientists depend on. Although, as you can see, on this somewhat more accessible level, even a manager, even a warehouse operative, without getting out their statistics and their calculators and their clever tools, can at a glance see what's going on and spot if they need to intervene. If we were to now be looking at picking and packing operations, we can, as you can see here, look at the types of outbound processes we're dealing with. Depending on your particular warehouse and your business, you might have timelines that you've got to keep. For example, one of our customers is a large supermarket chain. And some of their warehouses they use for their online shopping. That means that the delivery trucks have got to leave the warehouse at a particular time of day to still reach their customers in time. And this puts the picking and packing teams under great pressure. So for them, something like vehicle turnaround time is a truly vital metric. Talking up, Ross, talking about metrics, I think uh, it, this would have been brilliant for the customer I talked about earlier to have. If you think about this, what I was mentioning, these two groups, these two areas you can start articles in, uh, I'm sure it will be a, a very easy customization to have those two areas in here and see how over time, if we change that process of slotting um, to really track and to fine tune the parameters behind it, how the improvements, improvement will uh, go up over time. So uh, very good to track. Are you really on the right track? Are, you, are, we, are we realizing those gains that uh, were promised a few weeks ago? Absolutely. So this is simply one way of working the data. It's a very simplified one. As Alexandra suggests, if there are particular processes that you want to model, the information is there and you can really use that to drive your business and to spot where you could improve processes. Since this is the basis for a digital model of your warehouse, you can also look for correlations. So Alexander, I think this is something else you'd be doing. Is there some kind of link, particularly if you're in a seasonal industry? Is there maybe a pattern which is happening across the year where you know that you might have certain out of stock situations? You might know that you have certain sales patterns or, well, just imagine Black Friday. That's an obvious one in retail, particular times of the year when you might need to adjust how you do business. Is there also a link between, shall we say, the pick error rate and the type of product? With a supermarket situation, could it be that we have a, a regular problem with the cold store? This is something which we can provide as an information basis and where Alexander can, with his data science, actually find out what is driving it, what's behind it, and if you know the cause, then you know how to intervene. So, Alexander, I think this here is something else which might be very useful to you. If we're looking at the storage situation, now, this is the meat and drink of being a warehouse. We need to know what's on the shelves, what's in every single bin. This is important for replenishment. We need to know, do we still have enough shelf space? We also need to know if our capacity is maybe dropping rapidly, do we need to get those new deliveries in quickly? We could also see here how our different bins are being allocated between goods by value, goods by type. How quickly is our, what's the speed of our turnover? Are we seeing a trend? Is there a link here? And this is something else which is very useful but it's often very difficult to work with. So this is something else we're doing live. We're giving context to what we find. Because every single bin 
in a warehouse, it contains an item. That item, it might be a ball of string. Is that a piece, perhaps? Is it being measured in um, feet, in meters, in pounds, in kilograms, in volume, liters, cubic centimeters, whatever? The problem is, in a warehouse, there are so many different ways you can measure how much something is. And what we're doing here, we're turning all of those metrics into a single unified form, volume in liters. Again, this is on the fly, and this is what allows us to actually compare every single bin with every other bin. That's how we're able to show these kind of unified graphs and charts. So again, this is turning the raw data into information for you. And I think, and also, I think also, and and this was some, this is something you could spend uh, days uh, mess, messing with Excel and trying to to convert back and forth. Uh, but here would be all live and instantly available. Yeah. And this is the thing. These are the feeds which Alexander can use, which you can use. This is raw data in a form that is almost useless to you, turned into golden information that you can utilize and consume. Uh, here's a final screen, efficiency. So efficiency is something every single customer of ours measures in a slightly different way. It might, in, the nor in North America, be on an individual level. How quick is a particular person in a particular part of the warehouse? In Europe, that might be by teams or workstations. But the point is we can measure this efficiency. We can do this second to second, minute to minute, day to day, year to year, if you like. And this lets you again not just look for patterns, but these are figures that you can use predictively. If you know a particular speed right now, you know how many cases you need to say, replenish over the next six hours. If you know your replenishment rate, then you can easily forecast how it's going to take you. Do you need to get more people in? Do you need to get the new shift in earlier? So these are things that can help you steer and with these real-time sources, you can actually do that during the day. And that's the magic of real time. It's and live. Before the issue appears, basically, you can see it on the horizon coming up, and then you can directly take actions. It's not that you only see the results out of these issues. Absolutely, Mark. We've often only got a small window of time in which we can react. And that's why we need to know what's happening now and what's about to happen to us. To just look back on historic data from last week or yesterday is useless. That's happened. It's gone. So and be aware, this set of KPIs that we have presented to you, we have a bunch more of KPIs, so a long list of possible KPIs that could be part of this dashboard. But of course, it's also up to you. So what KPIs there might be in is a discussion we then take up individually. It's not a pre-built fixed thing where you where we give you a car and that's what you get. But basically you can say, do I want to have a big car, a small car, a caravan, four wheels, six wheels, eight wheels, whatever, which color we can do it for you. Whatever data this... that is available, we can bring to this dashboard. Quite. And we can do this across SAP products. So this is the case from where EWM, so for warehouse management. Often our customers would also have an S4 system with financial data, with actual delivery data. So speaking of delivery data, you might have TM, transportation management of your logistics. And for those as well, you can provide these kind of live insights across the supply chain. Absolutely. And what will even appear this year is that we will include sustainability KPIs. So it's not only then that you look at your operational point of view, but also considering your sustainability. So how 
do my inbound processes impact my carbon footprint? What can I take as actions out of this? This is also true for our EWM insights and all other dashboards that we are working on. Thank you, Mark. And if I may now hand back to Alexander and Mark. So you have seen now uh, the demo of our EWM Insights dashboard. It's really flexible and of course all this corporate color from Westernacher. Don't take this for, for granted. We can take your individual color coding and corporate guidelines up. So this is just an example how we at Westernacher would do it if you would like a really nice green or anything else we are up to it and your style guide can be implemented as well absolutely that's the easy part the real magic absolutely. of course is the fact we got these live real-time data models behind the kpis yeah so um this would be the part of our presentation and we are happy now to answer any questions that have come up. So Russ, I think there's uh, one question in the chat on uh, the technology in the background that fills the dashboard with data. Yes, I can happily take this. So what we're using here are typically what are called CDS views core data services. It's a form of programming that SAP provide to anyone who works with an SAP product, which can stage data and perform calculations in the database itself. It is the way in which you connect any SAP system, be it EWM, as we've just shown you, or S4 to any external consumer in this case, Analytics Cloud. And this is database independent. That's why they provide it. You could have an Oracle database. You could have the magical HANA that we're using. I mean, obviously we recommend HANA. It's so much quicker, but if needs must, this will work with anything. Another question came up, Russ. I think that is also a good one for you. Are there different views for different functions for C? Top four, planning, others? Absolutely. So this is something which we typically design with our customers. One size never fits all. We offer a menu card of KPIs, which we believe are the most typical and relevant. But then we inevitably end up designing things which represent their specific processes. And uh, this, depending on the precise industry, it's open ended. But yes, CDS views and things exist for pretty much anything. Any data you can calculate and stage. Ah, uh, I believe another one has come in on how do authorizations work for the dashboard? Well, in our particular case, our customers typically want it authorized by warehouse. And so there's a construct which we can use for that which enables us to link the visualizations of the dashboard to an individual's user's authorization role in the SAP systems. That's one way of doing it. Alternatively, something like the Analytics Cloud, which you just saw, lets us box dashboards up into different areas. It's a folder concept. And so a manager might be allowed to see our efficiency screen, which is a little bit too detailed for the everyday operative, is a little bit too sensitive. So that's another way. There are a myriad of different possibilities within the normal SAP authorization framework. And of course, you do not necessarily need to have access to SAC to have access to this dashboard. So what you can also put in place, which is a 
standard functionality from SAC is that you use a collaboration and broadcasting functionality inside SAC. So you can uh, select a recipient group and a date and time when these recipients shall receive a certain page or the whole dashboard. And then SAC will automatically send out the required information to these recipients in a PDF, in a PowerPoint, whichever format you would like to have. I would like to thank you all for participating. It was a pleasure having you with us. Have a good day and we would be happy if you would reach out to us if you would like to receive more information.